So, uh, what is memory core? Uh, when I began this project uh, as a historian of performing arts uh, contemporary history, one of the main traces was and still is uh, the video recording of the uh, performances. However, uh, uh, video recordings has a lot of limits. So, to explain the video, to make it uh, the implicit, explicit, what if uh, I could uh, link uh, the video recording to other documents, like, for example, uh, notebooks, storyboards, or uh, technical information? And also, what if I could uh, um, add uh, or um, link uh, the video recording to uh, websites, for example, blog posts or um, online newspapers, and so on? What if I could also add textual annotations to comment what we are seeing, and also visual annotations, for example, here to explain the beamer's uh, position for this uh, performance? So all these reflections uh, prompted uh, the development of Memory Call, which is a free and open source uh, web app that you can uh, use. And um, so this uh, web app um, creates what we call capsules, which are new documents that, uh, that can be shared and embedded in a web page. So Memory Call um, right now is used uh, in many contexts, not only for uh, performing arts, but also for preservation of digital works, documentation, pedagogy, publishing, and so on. So in the context of two European citizen science projects, uh, we uh, decided to broaden uh, its uses and to develop new functionalities. This citizen science project involved the collaboration of researchers, uh, developers, artists, teachers, and students. And this is why we are uh, so many uh, for this presentation. Um, so the first project, um, the name of this project is a cosmic project, uh, which was an Erasmus Plus uh, project supported by the European Federation of Professional Circus uh, Schools. And its objective was to introduce uh, European circus schools to the use of digital technologies and develop innovative teaching methods. So I've worked uh, with circus teachers and students in order to conceive teaching and learning scenarios with memory call. And in return, we had to develop new functionalities to feed their needs. The second project, COESO, is on collaborative engagement on societal issues. And in the context of uh, one of the projects, which uh, so pilot two, uh, the name of this project is Dancing Philosophy, Memory Call was used to document the collaboration between a philosopher and a choreographer. So this collaboration was also documented with La Band Kinetography, and so we will see how uh, this pointed the development of a new version of Memory Call. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to take you through how the uh, two projects that we've talked about have driven the development of Memory Call. Um, so first, I'll give a brief overview of the methodology that was deployed during the workshop and lab sessions in the context of these projects with the goal of developing the tool through a practice-led process. So our methodology was based on the Design Council's double diamond method, which some of you may know we've linked to in the slides, which you can get with the QR code at the end of the presentation. Um, so workshops were divided into two distinct phases, an exploration phase and a development phase. So the exploration phase would look to identify the participants' expectations for the tool through discussion. And then we move towards a development phase where uh, discussion progressively converges to specific needs and the formulation of features and functionalities which can then be communicated to the development time. Uh, team, I'm sorry. Uh, so many features and developments in Memory Call emerged from these sessions, and I'll go over a few examples. Uh, so in the Cosmic project, uh, one need that emerged uh, for, for circus professionals uh, was the ability to be able to change the rate of video playback, uh, notably for dissecting complicated gestures and figures. So this led us to the implementation of uh, control of video playback speed at a global level and also um, annotation by annotation level. 
Um, another important need for circus professionals was the ability to create visual annotations on top of the image to be able to point out and highlight specific parts and aspects. Uh, we implemented this through annotations that take a key moment from the video, which can then be edited with an array of, of drawing tools. Uh, to give you a better idea of how the tool configured itself, thanks to these sessions, uh, in the Cosmic Project, here's a short video that goes over the interface of a finished capsule. So you can see that uh, the video occupies a majority of the screen. Uh, we can interact with annotations on the right. Um, you see that all the annotations are time-based. They've got a certain amount of metadata, different types of annotations. We see that uh, some are going to be linked to images, some are going to be linked to uh, links on the web, some are linked to files that can be downloaded by the user. Uh, we'll note another important functionality um, that emerged from the co work with the Cosmic Project was uh, the, the ability to get an overview of all of one's annotations. Uh, and this led to the development of the mosaic view, which we see here, which gives an overview which can be filtered in various ways for the annotations in a project. Um, so this kind of workflow uh, leads to tools that are really anchored in real use cases um, that aren't developed for an imagined user base, but with a real one, um, which is a concept that lies at the, the very heart of citizen, citizen science. Um, and we see that a citizen science approach can also be a, a powerful tool in software development. Uh, so to end, uh, I'll talk about some more recent work that we've been pursuing since January this year. Uh, so this time in the context of the other citizen science project we mentioned, the COZO project. Uh, so the nature of this project has highlighted some new questions, uh, notably how can we expand memo recall's capacity to link to documents? Uh, is the video recording always the main document? And uh, also, how can we um, explain complica uh, complicated documents such as Laban notations, which is a way of notating dance that was heavily used in this project? Um, how can we explain that kind of uh, document to a ge more general audience? Uh, so to answer the first question, we've looked to IIIF, or the International Image Interoperability Framework. So it's a lightweight JSON format that refers to pre-existing media resources on the web uh, that follows a set of standards that are defined and maintained by an international consortium of institutions, including Harvard and Stanford. Uh, so the idea is that digital traces can be freely exchanged between different viewing environments, IIIF viewers, um, and documents from collections across the globe can be linked together. So our new version of Memory Call bases itself on a fork of one such IIIF viewer uh, called Mirador, which is um, already widely used um, by many clan professionals. Um, and we've added a number of new features, uh, notably support for video and audio playback. Um, the technical possibilities offered by the IIIF format and initial case studies around the COSO project have allowed us to shift our epistemological uh, perspective away uh, from a necessarily video-centric approach. Um, we're going to be talk, uh, well, to demonstrate this, I'll show you some of these features um, in our finished prototype in another video. Uh, so if we have a look at our prototype in action, um, so as this plays, I'll just let you know that we're also giving a poster presentation later today which focuses on the more technical side of the prototypes. If you're interested, please come and have a chat about that. But here we see that, uh, so we've got our basic annotation functionalities um, up and running. So this is a sandbox which is live, which you can go and uh, have a test of. Here we've got image annotations, which uh, here are being painted directly on top of the, um, of the main media resource. Uh, here we're taking up functionalities from the original memory call version, where we've got uh, links to documents which can be downloaded. I've also implemented time-linked uh, annotations which control video and audio playback um, and also added painting of link media directly on top or below of the main one. Uh, so this is great for giving context and explaining uh, complicated documents like Laban notations, for example. Here we see what the document is uh, 
depicting at the same time. Uh, so we can also um, propose the idea of creation and navigation of heterarchical multimodal document networks where a video may be just one point of entry of many. So we here have an example here of, uh, of navigating one of these, uh, one of these networks. And we've also developed a uh, means of creating data-driven interfaces that allow us to navigate these networks fluidly. Um, so in traditional ways, such as with network graphs, as we saw before, or in more bespoke interfaces like the one we see here um, that can be generated from the document collection through the processing of uh, metadata or distant reading techniques, distant viewing techniques, um, etc. And here we just have a final kind of putting everything together of... Uh, navigating a, a network of multimodal documents. So, in conclusion, um, the initial work in partnership with the COSO project uh, that led to our prototype has led to a new development phase for memo recall. So, uh, we will obviously be making it fully IIIF compatible, and uh, starting from next year, we'll also be uh, integrating AI and ML driven corpus analysis tools. And from Jan January next year, also, um, Clarice will be starting her ERC funded stage project uh, in REN. Uh, within which the tool uh, will be integrated as well. So thank you for your attention. Uh, please come and speak to us uh, if you're interested to find out more. Uh, also, a quick heads up, uh, we're hosting a conference in Wren uh, in February next year uh, around the reimagining an uh, annotation for multimodal cultural heritage. So if you're interested in that, please take a look at the website. And uh, thank you to the organizers, and thank you to you all for listening.